Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, learning about Jingdezhen porcelain. In this video, we're gonna give you a brief overview about what makes Jingdezhen porcelain so special. We are in the beautiful part of China known as Jingdezhen, specifically Sanbao village. They've been making porcelain in Jingdezhen since the Han dynasty nearly 2000 years ago. And while styles may have changed, Jingdezhen has always been synonymous with the finest porcelain China can make. Let's go into this factory and see what makes Jingdezhen porcelain so special. I'm here with Joe, the factory manager here, and he's been walking me through the entire process to make Jingdezhen porcelain. And I have to say, my mind is a bit blown here, which is why I need him next to me because I'm going to forget the steps. So first of all, obviously, is mixing the different um, kaolin from the mountains here with the stone, making a powder, mixing it with water, yes. right? There will be molds that have already been made and they're made out of plaster, Yes. correct? Okay, and so then the, uh, the mixture of kaolin and uh, rock is um, injected into the molds. It comes out of the outside and then those are allowed to set. Yes. Yes. And then after that, they dry for a little while. Dry for a little while and the people clean the dust and the, the trimming line. Okay. That's it. So next step is cleaning uh, dust away and then goes to the trimming uh, uh, process, which I have to say, is more than just a trimming process. It's really a sculpting process and takes a lot of skill. And we've got some footage of it. And really, Jingdezhen porcelain and its um, uh, reputation for being super, super thin really comes to this stage. It's all about trimming down the excess amount of, uh, of the material down to, you said, about 90%. Gets Maybe more. Maybe more. So down 90% or more gets removed to make it super, super, super thin. Yes. And the skill is incredible with the tools that they're using that they have to keep sharpening every day. And Joe was saying that it takes at least eight years of, of practice for them to get to that point, but they've been doing it since they were teenagers. So really, really skilled, skilled Maybe work. the young, you look so young master, they have been working for 20 years. Yeah, so young masters have been working for 20 years. Incredible skill, and this is really where it comes into its own. After that, it needs to be just cleaned again, right? And then goes for the first firing. Yes, base first, fire. First fire is the base fire, 700 degrees for about 10 hours or so. Then a day of cooling. And then after that, you can do your underglaze painting and your glazing, okay? That um, is a whole other skillful uh, work, which hopefully we might be able to get, some see, get to see some in action. And then once the uh, final uh, piece is ready, it then goes for its second firing, which is 1300 degrees. The time depends on the size, varies between 10 hours yes. up to 20 hours, depending on the size. Again, a day for it to cool down. And in this phase, uh, Joe was saying that there's even a good kiln will have about 30%? 13% of the fail works. So 30% will be rejected because of little specks of black, uh, black, black point, black shrink points. of the glaze, and also shrink of the shape, or different kind of, maybe crackle in the, on the bottom, yeah. or different kind. So after the, the second firing mm. and the day of cooling, they're inspected, you're gonna get a 30% rejection rate. And then after that, you can do overglaze painting, which gives a textured finish to the piece. But every time you do a single color, of overglaze painting, it needs to be fired again. Is that fired? Once, yeah. Is that fired in the same heat or is different, it different? Different kiln. It's different kiln. Special overglaze uh, tile or overglaze bottle uh, kiln. It has to be fired about 780. 780 for yeah. a shorter period of time? For a long time. For a long time? Yeah, like 15 hours. Okay, so every color of overglaze and the one day is cooling requires that kiln and 780 degrees for, for 15 hours did you say yes 15 hours and then one day of cooling and then you can do a second color so every time you see an extra color that's another two days of of of, of firing and cooling not to mention the skill and artistry of the painting yes 
and cleaning up the bottoms, preparing it, then it's ready. Or is there any other, are there any other stages? Sometimes we use some very fine of the water sander okay. paper to sand it more smooth. Okay, so real finishing touches. It doesn't leave this factory. Joe will not let it leave this factory unless it gets his stamp of approval as proper Qingdezhen porcelain. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Remarkable stuff. So this is the very famous Jingdezhen blue and white porcelain. And Joe was just saying to me that the, they use cobalt um, to make the blue and it's the same cobalt, but you can see you've got much darker shades of blue here and you've got very, very light shades of blue. And interestingly, Joe was saying that in order to dilute it, the best way of diluting it is not just with water, but with tea water, so, so brewed tea. And the older the tea, the better the effect. Yes. How old is the... It could be five years and uh, even more. <laughs> so five-year-old five tea, uh, five-year-old tea or more makes the best dilution for cobalt, for this blue and white porcelain. Yeah, normally you can use the yesterday's tea water. That's okay. Yesterday's. Yes. Yesterday's is all right, but wait five years and you get the the finest results. Yes. So beautiful. I had no idea. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> another, another use that of tea. That could be one connection. <laughs> no, this way. This uh, way. Right, so there's a big rejection rate. Yes. There's a big failure rate. After so much of painting, Wow. you will have a crackle and everything from the start. <laughs> so this is an example of overglaze painting and Joe was just saying it's amazing because for every color has to be fired separately, otherwise they'll blend together the colors too much. But because they're firing the same piece so many times with these intricate many color pieces, there's such a high risk of it uh, failing and there's big failure rate. Take a look at this one. Just incredible. The single detail of it. So this is Celadon, very famous in China. I love this color so much. And Joe was saying that this is all to do with iron. So not using cobalt, but they're putting a tiny percentage of iron into the, the clear into glaze. the clear glaze, and if they put too much, it will go brown and brown, not brown, nice. Black. So 0.3 percent. So it's about really making sure it's a minuscule amount of iron will make this beautiful color. It's just copper. Just copper. So sometimes it goes green, sometimes it goes red, or is it... no? It depends on the uh, inside of the kiln. The clear kiln. This uh, green is oxidation, mm. and the red is reduction. Ah. So the same kiln, you have to control the environment. It has to be o oxidation, also redu reduction mm. with uh, a different process, different okay. time. But and can you control get... that? Can the artist control they which can... bits go green and which bits go red, or is no? No, we, we just can control the environment. What time? Uh, we can have uh, the oxidation, what time we can have reduction. Uh. But we can't control which part. Yeah. yeah. So every time you open the kiln, but even, it's exciting. Even this is a master work. Yeah, we have yeah. to control the environment. Yeah, yeah. And this is what it's all about, this incredible fine porcelain. So this has a slip um, extra being put on top. And this one here is carved into the porcelain. Again, you ready for the reveal? You can see the intricate work here, but when I put this to the light. Absolutely incredible. Mind blowing. Some mountains. Some mountains. Show them, Joe. Get your hands dirty. Sorry. 
writing your name at the bottom, Mama? Yes, Mew. Since we're at the Jingdezhen factory, we figured why not make our own masterpieces? So, in this small kiln behind us, which is hitting 1000 degrees Celsius, there are some uh, little pots that have been actually not made by us, but made by Joe here. And uh, he's uh, kindly given them to us to glaze. So we've glazed them and they're being fired at the moment. It's a, it's a nice thing they do here. Really, really amazing factory. They bring kids uh, here. They have workshops here to teach them, inspire them in the art of porcelain making. So this is gonna be opened up in a little bit and we'll see how they turn out. Who knows, maybe they'll hit the Mayleaf shop sometime soon. No, they won't. The masterpieces. Um, I, I think that that. Mew, you and I, we might need some more practice. <laughs> yeah. Whereas sure. Celine's one. Yes, uh, I got lucky. <laughs> Yo, come on. That's pretty special. I like yeah. that one. Yeah. This one's nice. I like it. It's pretty good. I'll, I'll put a flower in it. Your one, what would you do with that? I don't know. Pot a plant. Maybe. <laughs> Not even that. <laughs> so maybe. I see what is the plan is going to match with that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> it's one is a cactus. Mm. Oh, wait, let me see. This one is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it went quite dark, but it was quite light paint before. It is. But you did. He said you don't know what color it's going to change into. Um, and this one's so funny. your one, your outside is a bit black. Yeah. You know, but the inside definitely got a nice reaction yeah. going that's, on there. That's so sweet. Yeah. But still, it's precious memories. Yeah. From Jing de Jun. Jing de Jun. <laughs> Jing de Jun. <laughs> We're at a different factory at Jingdezhen and I just wanted to show you the difference between mold made guy ones. These ones are fully handmade. So you can get fully, fully handmade guy ones here. This is just done on the wheel. Incredible, incredible skill. Come and take a look. Again, I could spend the whole day just watching these guys work. So for fully handmade, it's obviously going to cost more money but you're gonna get that extra level of attention. The choice between mold made or hand, fully handmade is one mostly of financial decision. If you're gonna be producing a large quantity, say over about 200 or 300 units, then it makes more financial sense to go for mold make, made uh, ceramic ware. But if you're going less than that and you want really, really 
fine-tuned individual pieces, then fully handmade is the way to go. So it's a financial decision depending upon what you are looking for. Don't get me wrong, the mold made stuff, as you can see, is still really, really artisan. They finish it all by hand, so there's a lot going on, but there's nothing quite like fully handmade. lens is super dirty, it has been touched. Okay, ready? ready. Jingdezhen is quite rightly known for its incredible painting artistry. And sometimes the individual teaware is painted freehand, but usually there is a trace done. So first of all, it's done freehand on one piece of ceramic, for example here, these urns here. So it'll be done in pencil by an artist and then they will wrap it with tracing paper and they will trace the uh, artwork. After that, they'll put that tracing paper onto layers of plastic and they'll prick holes in the, pla in the paper through the plastic so that they have a plastic trace. They'll then wrap that plastic around here and wash it with red ink and where there are holes in the plastic, you will start to see the impression of the artwork. There's still a lot of work to be done here. You can still this is, see this is relatively messy. The artist will then step in and they will do the outlines. So this is done with the same ink that is going to be used um, to paint the whole piece of ceramic. After this, the hard work begins. And you can see these ladies here are doing that work, coloring it in different shades. This is all Qinghua ceramics so this is under glaze and will turn blue so this will be the classic jingdezhen blue and white pottery come here you can see some teaware being done here They also do engraving in this particular factory. Let me show you some incredible artistry here. Just everywhere you look, you see this amazing engraving. And there are other examples which we will show you, no doubt, because they are quite spectacular. So these are done starting with, uh, again, a drawing, a trace, and then the engraving begins. Look at the level of detail you have here. Incredible to think that this is all done by hand. You can see there's engraving going on all around. More engraving here. Oh, here's a good one. Come here, you can see. All done by hand. These are the kinds of tools that they use here to create from this pencil drawing, this amazing, intricate carving. And this is why Jingdezhen is so renowned for its artistry. There are workers working all around us, busy, busy. I could spend the whole day just watching them do their thing.
Let's take a look at some of the final pieces. Take a look at this. So this is the Qinghua style. This one is probably traced because it's got very clear lines. But <clears throat> for this kind of artwork where it's much more free form, much more about brush strokes and painting, this one is most probably gonna be done individually, piece by piece, as will this one be. And this one, I love that. Really organic brush strokes and then picking out little details of landscapes. Beautiful, beautiful work here. Incredible. You can see some carvings here where they've taken lots of layers of glaze to make that celadon color and then left parts unglazed. Beautiful as well. Overglazed painting, lots of that. Let me quickly, if you can, Celine, come up here. Let's take a look at some other pieces again. So you've got the underglaze and then no glaze. Great look, I like that. You've got these um, ceramic style paintings here. What's lovely about them is that when they come out of the kiln, they have a certain character through the oxidation. So you, you get all of this, this character in this natural character and then they pull out all of this detail as well. There's one piece that you really have to see over here. If you just follow me, let's take a look at this one. This one here, I was told, took two people nearly a year to carve. Now bear in mind that there's such a high chance that this would break in the kiln. So there's a huge risk for nearly a year's amount of work for two people to carve all of these flowers into this incredible craftsmanship everywhere you look, incredible artistry and craftsmanship. It's not just craft, it's truly artistic. It's amazing. <sighs> Lots of zeros at the end of the prices, but that's what you pay for the amount of dedication um, and skill that it takes to make this Jingdezhen ceramic ware. If you ever visit Jingdezhen, then I highly recommend that you have a walk through Sanbao village. Reserve a full day for it. It's a long, long street full of little workshops, bijou, little teaware shops and old village houses. It's incredible. We've spent our whole day walking here, but I have a couple of bits of advice for you. First of all, Walk the whole street before you purchase anything. Don't just get sucked into the first bit of amazing teaware that you find because you don't know further on if there might be something better that you like or if you see something that's similar but a cheaper price. Second bit of advice, make sure you budget beforehand because in this place you'll spend your yearly salary in one day if you're a teaware geek like me. We're gonna head off to the final shop where I have my eye on a guy one if we can purchase it, I'll show it to you, no doubt, in future videos. But that's it from Jing to Jen. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Maley. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.